Welcome hockey fans to another edition of the Wolves Hockey Show, where we bring you weekly highlights, clips, news, information, and much more about the Wolves Hockey Program. My name is Andrew Trimble. I'm here with my co-host. Tim Kuhns. And we had a great week last week, Coach. Yeah. All the teams are really cranking, ready to get into the holiday uh, season. We're really doing well. Tell me about the 16s and 14s. How did they do last weekend? Yeah, so both our U14 and U16s were in action. Um, U16s played Semang Academy, and our U14s played the New England Stars. They won that game 8-1. to one. That's great. Now those youth teams now, um, they really stepped up their game to play a higher level. The New England Stars are a program that have been around for 20 years. Uh, they've put a ton of kids into college. Semang Academy is a Canadian team, and uh, the teams are just doing, doing really well, and they're playing this great competition. What, what does it say for you about those coaches and those kids? Yeah, I, I think uh, the results have been impressive for, for both teams. So I know we've worked hard on the ice um, with both teams. And, uh, you know, to, to get rewarded with to score eight goals in a game is uh, it's what it's all about. Absolutely. Now, I know uh, EHL Premier was in action this, this weekend. Tell me about those games. Yeah, the P team did really well. We had two games. And we won them both. We beat the Walpole Express on Friday by a score of 6-5. to five. And then on Saturday, in a real barn burner at home, we beat the Boston Junior Rangers 10-9. to nine. We got some clips, and we're going to show you those right now. So this is in Friday night's action down in Walpole, Mass. It's a tie game, 5-5. to five, About four or five minutes to go in the third period. We make a great regroup. Noah Worth, the veteran forward of the Wolves, finishes a nice regroup and finishes with a back end to take the 6-5 to five lead. Wolves would take this game by a final score of 6-5. to five. This was one of the crazier games of the year. We traded goals throughout the, throughout the contest uh, and fell by a score in the second, second period of 5-3. to three. But we fought back, tied it up. Herbie Zybots made a great move right there, a one-on-one -on -one move, and finished the play to not the score at 5-5 five to five halfway through the second period. And here it is, our game winner from Saturday's game. Great defensive play by Andreas Matika right here. Going from defense to offense, leading the rush. He gets zone entry and makes a nice play to Herbie Zybots again, who finishes the play on his backhand. Zybots would have five points on the day, and Wolves would win the game 10-9 game over the Boston Junior Rangers. Great effort throughout. Great finish to the contest. So the Wolves EHLP team has now won 12 of their last 15. Uh, they're getting great individual performances and they're starting to climb up the standings competing with those top teams in the league like the Boston Junior Rangers, the Worcester Railers, the Avalanche, things like that. Coach, who, who in, in your observations of the P game, who's stood out for you? Yeah, I think kind of uh, this past weekend and, and really all season, like Ricard Jelensky's um, forward from Latvia has been, been one of the top players in the league. Um, and, you know, being a forward any time uh, the team can score 16 goals in two <laughs> games is uh, really impressive. Yeah, I don't know if that was our opponent's goaltending or our, or our ability to put the puck in the net, but we still got 16 goals. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now, Coach, <laughs> tell me about the EHL team. How did they do this last week? Yeah, so let, this past week, the EHL team, we had a showcase uh, in Newington, Connecticut. So we had two games down there. Um, then we followed that up at home. Um, on Sunday against the Wizards. So down, down in the showcase, we played the Team Maryland on Wednesday, uh, won that game 6-3, to three, and followed that up the next, next day with a 3-2 win in overtime against the Junior Flyers. Um, and then on Sunday, back at home, uh, in a regular game, we played the East Coast Wizards, won that game 6-1. to one. That's, Those are great results. We got some highlights for you right now. Here we have... Uh, Clip against the Junior Flyers down at the Newington Showcase. This is in overtime, score tied 2-2. Two to two. We have Captain DJ Schwenke makes a great pass to Sean O'Gorman. Beats a goalie on the wraparound. Wolves won 3-2, to two, won both games at the Showcase. Here we have action from our home game Sunday against the East Coast Wizards. We have Garth Wickham is... A 20-year-old forward from Michigan, blocks a shot, gets on a breakaway. Great fake, slides the puck into the empty net. Wolves would go on to win 6-1. to one. 
So the EHL team is really rolling, Coach. You've won uh, three games this week. Um, you're climbing up the stands. You're actually approaching a, a franchise record for, for victories with this team. So it's a great job, Coach. Who is uh, standing out this week in terms of their play on the ice? Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, like, like you said, the team's playing really well right now. We've won, I think, now seven out of the last ten. Um, on the ice, this uh, past several games, we've had LJ Newell. He's a goaltender from Colorado who's played really well um, in that. Uh, also, Matt Amonti, uh, who's a forward from, from Long Island, New York, has, has been especially well up front. That's great. Now, one of the, the strengths of the team is that, that core group of, of 99 birth year players. Um, you know, having those older players within the program uh, not only gives you that stability and that leadership, but also those are the kids we're looking to get onto school. Tell me a little bit about um, some of our guys who are, are, are talking to schools, where they're headed, kids who are committed already. Where are we at with college commitments? Yeah, so I, I think, like you said, the, the 99 birth year, uh, all those players get a lot of interest from from college programs. Um, one player we have, Robbie Hake, is already committed. He's going to play at uh, SUNY Morrisville, at Morrisville State. Um, and then uh, a lot of guys I know we've mentioned on, on the show before um, have a lot of interest from schools, and I think we'll have uh, some commitments here in the next the next couple weeks. Um, guys like DJ Schwenke, Jack Loran, uh, Matt Amonti, Tom Kahn, and all those guys uh, should be picking their their college choices here soon. That's great. You know, we bring these players from all over, all over the country, all over the world. They come into Laconia here in the Lakes region, and they're looking for that opportunity to play on in college. And uh, it, it's fun to see that process of a kid coming into the program, playing hockey, developing, getting better, getting coaching, and then getting a chance to see these different schools here in New England. Uh, you know, a kid like. Robbie Hakey's from New York. He's going to be going to a New York school. But a kid like DJ Schwenk, he's coming from Colorado, and he sees all these East Coast schools. It's a pretty remarkable opportunity. Yeah, I, I think part of it is, is playing in the Eastern Hockey League in our league. Um, is most of the teams are located in New England, um, which is where the majority of college hockey programs are located as well. So it's an ideal opportunity for someone who wants to play um, in front of college coaches. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of kids who are looking to get on to college, we have an interview coming up here with Jack Ennis, who's a kid we're going to look to get on to school in a couple of years. Right, Coach? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Welcome aboard, Jack. All right, with me now is Jack Ennis. Uh, Jack, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from? Uh, I'm Jack Ennis. I'm from Rosendale, Massachusetts, in Boston. And um, my first year here with the Wolves. And that's about it. Great. So, Jack, why don't uh, you tell me a little bit about your hockey career, where maybe where you, you started playing and um, where, where you played last year? Um, started playing, um, like, uh, in my hometown, the town team, Parkway Hockey. And then uh, later I played with the Boston Bandits, the Boston Junior Terriers, and the Greater Boston Junior Bruins. And last year I played high school at Catholic Memorial uh, High School in Boston. You had a brother who played hockey as well? Yes. Uh, my older brother, Jimmy, played uh, college hockey at UMass Boston. Great. Uh, so, Jack, tell me, what, what, uh, what kind of led you to, the, to playing for the Wolves and, and uh, the reasons you decided to, to come to Laconia? Um, like I've known the Laconia area a little bit, come down here for summer vacations and stuff. I've heard about the Wolves. I reached out to uh, Coach... Uh, in the middle of last season, and uh, he had me come down and practice with the team, and I really liked it. I decided to play here. Great. Now, how has uh, how's the experience been during the season? Uh, we're about halfway through. Uh, I know it's been a, been a lot of time on the ice uh, mm -hmm. practicing and uh, about 25 games played. So what, uh, what's been your impressions of the program in this first half? Um, a really hard-working team. Um, it was a big jump coming from high school, playing against guys two years older. And um, there's been, the team's been really good. A lot of hard workers, good leaders. Now, now what are some of your, some of your personal goals uh, that you hope to accomplish while you're at the Wolves? Um, I hope to play college hockey one day. That's why I'm here playing. And uh, yeah, that's my goal. And what do you want to study in college? Criminal justice. 
Okay. And uh, so you're living here in Laconia. Why don't you tell me a little bit about, about where you're living, who, who uh, uh, your roommate is? I'm living with uh, the Haynes family, and uh, my roommate's Connor Cleese from Norway. And how, how is it living with Connor and, and the Haynes? Uh, it's, it's been a good time, a good family. Connor's a good kid, a lot of fun. Okay, and, and uh, what do you think about the rest of the year going forward? Uh, I think Wolves right now sit in fifth place in the Northern Conference. Um, you know, what, what do you hope to, to accomplish here for the rest of the season? Uh, I think anything's possible for our team. We've proved it. We've beaten um, every top five team, well, except, except one. So we've beaten pretty much every top team in the league, so I think anything's possible. I think we can make it. I think we can take the championship. All right, Jack, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So that was a great interview with Jack Ennis. And it really reminds me of, um, you know, Jack used to vacation up here. Now he's coming up and he's living here and he's, he's developing his game to get on to college hockey. And he's living with a family, uh, Devin Mark Haynes, who are a councilman here in Laconia. It really shows how these kids, these you know, people who live in the area, really embrace these kids as they come and be part of the Wolves. Yeah, we've had uh, Wolf staying with the Haineses um, for several years here. Um, and I know as, as a program, we want to be uh, involved in the, in the community in, in a positive way. So um, really great to have, have a couple more players uh, staying at that house again this year. Yeah, if you look at the, ha the Haines family history, they have a couple kids who are on now playing college hockey. They got, a couple, they got one kid, Sam Russell, who's playing pro over in, over in the United Kingdom. And you know, they got a kid from Norway and a kid from Massachusetts. That's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. So, Coach, what do we have uh, coming up for the EHL Premier Team? So, the P team has a pretty busy schedule for the next uh, six days while they're here in Laconia before they go home for Christmas break. They're going to be playing a lot of hockey. On Tuesday, uh, we have the Worcester Railers. We travel down uh, in a combined EHL-EHLP game on Tuesday. And then we have two home games on Saturday and Sunday where we play the Connecticut Chiefs. Uh, One's an afternoon game against the Chiefs here, and one's on Sunday morning. So it'll be a Northern Conference opponents and be tough test for us, but we'll uh, we'll look to get all those points before the break ends. The break begins, excuse me. Now, Coach, tell me about the EHL team. What do they got? Yeah, so EHL team also has uh, three games uh, before the Christmas break. We'll uh, be playing Worcester Railers uh, just before the premier game and then this weekend we also play the Connecticut Chiefs both games at home Saturday night and Sunday afternoon so some some good doubleheader action uh, coming up for the Wolves junior teams yeah now we have uh, on those Saturday and Sunday games against the Chiefs we usually get a pretty good crowd around Christmas you know uh, usually kids are coming back into town after being away from college or uh, you know there's a lot of activity going on high school hasn't started up yet so we usually get a pretty good crowd uh, we have Santa coming on, on Saturday. Uh, that'll be always good for the kids to get some selfies and some pictures taken. Uh, and we're doing a host family benefit, too. We're having a potluck-style dinner on Saturday and Sunday afternoon in which the host families can come and hang out with their kids for a little bit and uh, also catch some great hockey. Yeah, some exciting stuff, uh, especially this weekend. Santa will be dropping the puck, so he's undefeated in, in Laconia. <laughs> Knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> I know Santa's excited and all the kids, uh, like Jack Ennis, is, I could see him off camera, really excited to see Santa Claus. Yeah, that's a big one, yeah. definitely a big one. I, I think the, the best game we've ever coached in this building, uh, you and I, was uh, against the New Jersey 87s right around Christmas, a couple years ago. And uh, it was a game that went back and forth, 7-6, um, and we ended up tying the game on a, on a neutral zone faceoff, right coach? That's right, yeah, the pr premier game two years ago. Uh, Bryce Ricker tied up, tied up the game last second there. Yeah, so hopefully we have similar heroics, uh, you know, coming out of our teams this weekend. Now, Coach, uh, we've had a, a lot of involvement with uh, f during the holiday season. We've had a ton of stuff going on with uh, community interaction and, uh, and and different things where we're reaching out to the community and also trying to give back a little bit. One of the main parts of that program is, is our learn to skate uh, stuff that we do. Um, our EHLP team has volunteered every Saturday, and uh, this was the conclusion this past weekend for the, uh, for the Learn to Skate, for the first session of the Learn to Skate program. Coach, what's your take on some of the stuff we're doing with those guys? Yeah, like, uh, like you said, Learn to Skate, Wolves have been involved with that um, since I've been here. 
Um, so great to, to for the local kids to have their first steps on the ice in uh, that Merrill Fay Arena. We have a couple clips here we're going to show you from the Learn to Skate. So this is from Saturday's final session of the first semester of Learn to Skate, taking the kids on a little bumper car ride here for a little bit of fun. We've done a great job, and all our kids interacting with these first-time skaters, and uh, the kids have learned a lot. The Wolf has had a lot of fun, and it's been a great community involvement. So as coaches and managers and owners of the Wolves, we want to wish all the families in the community a happy holidays and uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, you can 